On the guest list, media Matt Frazier. Okay, so this is kind of a dream come true for me. I love psychics. I've been since I was little. Um, why do you think we are all so intrigued by the afterlife? Well, from what people tell me, everybody's afraid of one thing, and that is dying. And more importantly, when we lose a loved one, the first thing that people ask me is they want to know, is my loved one okay? Are they on the other side? Is there an afterlife? And listen, I don't care if you have the most faith in this world. When you lose a loved one, it rocks your whole world. Yes. And when that happens, all the questions come up. And you can have the most faith, but at the same time, every single person goes through grief. Yeah. And grief makes us question those same questions. Is my loved one okay? Are they with me? And that's where I come in. And so are they with us? They're with us every day. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Because I feel like you can feel it. Absolutely. You know, what's so amazing is when our loved ones pass on to the other side, what the spirits tell me is that they have a way to communicate with us here in this world. And that way is through signs. Signs like dragonflies, repeating numbers, dreams, intense feelings, feeling like you're not alone. You right. know, these are all signs that our loved ones use to reach us every day. That's a question that I was going to say because, you know, we want to see the signs. And so is, does that play a part or is there like... It really is them. Well, no, it really is them. And what, it's actually funny because you're saying that people want to see the signs, yeah. but I actually run into the fact that people don't know what to look for. And a lot of times people ask me, Matt, what is a sign? How do I know that my loved ones are there? Well, the first thing to know is that if it's a sign from your loved one, it will represent them, their personality, who they were here in this world. And you always know it's a sign when it keeps happening and happening and happening. That's how you know that it's real. I've been seeing dragonflies like every single day for the past like a couple weeks. And then I've been looking at them and I, I feel like a sense of calmness and then like a certain loved one comes into my brain. I don't know if that's just me thinking about them or if it really is them. No, it definitely is them. Definitely. And that's how you know that it's real. When all of a sudden you see a sign and then all of a sudden they pop into your head, you know that it's them. Yes. And that's how I actually teach people on, you know, who's sending you the sign. I teach people, you know, what to look for. And that's what you look for. It's when you see that sign. Who pops into your head? Who are you thinking of at that moment? And once you can answer that, you know who you're in contact with. And then can we reach out to them? Yes, so here's what's really cool, is that when we pass on, we pass on for one reason, because we truly never die. There's another version of us. Deep within us, we all have a soul. And that soul is that second part of us. It's the energy version. Yep. So when our soul transitions onto the other side, what's so amazing is this, is that it's energy. So the same way that our loved ones can visit us in a dream, the same way weird things happen, like elect electricity, you know, starts to play tricks on us, like lights start to flicker. Yeah. What's also amazing is that we can reach our loved ones as well in the spirit world. How do we do that? So here's how we do that. So it's all through our thoughts. Thoughts are energy. Have you ever noticed that when someone is angry with you, you literally feel sick? Absolutely. As an empath, I'm, I feel things all the time. Too exactly. much. <laughs> and even if somebody lives in a different state, in a different city, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so crazy. So the same thing is, is that you're feeling people's energy that are living. Well, what about people who passed on? We can feel their energy too. And we can send energy to them. So when you think about a loved one in spirit, right? Just think about them, like say, I wish my dad was here right now. I wish that my grandmother was here and with me. What you're doing is you're actually texting them in heaven right at that moment. Just like text messages we receive here in this world, thoughts are text messages to heaven. Why? Because they share one thing in common, it's energy. Yeah, and so how do they, I mean, I'm sure there's like a speed pass for these people, like how are they getting there so quickly? Well, Where? Yeah. Let me ask you this. How does that text message get to China so quickly? How does it get to, Technology. you know? Yeah, it's because it's energy, right? So like when you text, you can text energy, anyone in the world and it'll be there instantaneous. When you think about your loved one, it will reach them instantly. And that's what I want to share with everybody. Oh my gosh. I think that's amazing. I, cause I, you know, you always hope that and we have faith and I think that's why we have faith. But so what do, what happens when they do pass? What does it look like over there? So, you know, first of all, I don't know everything there is to know about heaven okay. and the afterlife. But being a medium and connecting with the souls on the other side, I've noticed that when I talk to different souls, I've gotten little glimpses of what heaven looks like, what they're doing there. And here's what I can tell you. Heaven is a reflection of what we loved here in this world. And it best represents us. Just like everyone's home is different. For example, you might go to one person's home and it's decorated super modern. You might go to someone else's home and it's really traditional. Mm -hmm. In the spirit world, when we transition on to heaven, it's like creating our own world. It's a reflection of our life 
here in this world and the things we loved. Whoa! So they have like houses? Like spirit houses? <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it spirit houses. It's not like they live in a community. Yeah. Oh, no. But what's so amazing is that when I do connect with spirits, you know, they'll show me things that they loved here in this world. For example, somebody who was a fisherman will show me that they're out on the water, you know, out in the middle of, of the lake. If somebody was here and they loved architecture, maybe I'll see them sitting on top of a tall building because that was a reflection of their life here in this world. And that's where they want to be. That's where their happiest vibes and energy were on this world. So that's maybe the, how they feel over over there? Well, you got to remember that heaven is not a separation of worlds, even though it feels like that for us, right? In between our world and the spirit world is a veil. And if I were to lift up a veil, it's almost like a thin curtain right here, right now, we would see our loved ones with us every day. And that's what I see as a medium. I but in the to, best way possible. I have to ask you. Ask me. How, I know what you're going to ask. What? So you're going to ask me if they see us go to the bathroom, <laughs> if they see us do all these things. Yes, you are. I already know. That's I, mean, what I, have thought, I have thought about that in the past. Is it, how, do they? Absolutely. No. They, oh, wait. They don't, not like they, they have access to that information if they wanted to see that. So, well, okay. All the things we, you know, as teenagers that, you know, we got past our parents, maybe our grandparents saw the whole thing. Yes. No! <laughs> yes. It happens. It but they, happen. they forgive us. There's no judging. There's no judging. Right? Because I'm sure they did it too. <laughs> well, listen, here's what it is, right? When we get transition on, our loved ones can see everything and anything that we do. But do they tune into that? I like to think of it as this. Like right? a radio. Well, no, I like to think about it like security cameras. We all have security cameras in our house, right? But when you're not home, how often are you looking at those cameras? You know, just like your mom or your dad wouldn't walk in on you in the bathroom, they're not going to do that in heaven. Right. Because there's one thing I know is that your loved ones don't change. So if they weren't super, super invasive and, and nosy here in this world, they're not going to be that way in the afterlife. Right, right. So what I, what I really want to ask you is how did you figure out that you had these abilities and are people just around you all of the time? Yes. So first of all, when I was just a little kid, it, for me, it was like living that movie, The Sixth Sense. It's literally when I would go to bed, I would sense and feel people who had died. Did it freak you out? Oh my God. It so freaked me out. I literally was afraid to go to bed because I knew that the moment I was alone or the moment that I went to bed, that the voices would start and I had no way of controlling it. So it's voices and feelings. Like, did you see people pop up like under your bed? Like, it sounds so scary. So what's really weird is this. My gift has changed as I've gotten older. So when I was a little kid, I would see and hear the departed. But being older now and actually learning about my gift, you know, they reach me in a different way. They reach me through my thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Do I still see figures and souls? Absolutely. But the direct connection for me is really sensing, feeling, and hearing them. And then I'm sure your family, I guess, was behind this and nurtured this rather than think like, oh, he's got like a split personality or like what's going on, you know? Well, my grandmother was a medium and my mom is as well. But you got to remember that when I say that they were a medium, a lot of people think that, oh, well, you know, they had a career in this. No, they just had the ability. They didn't do it, you know, for money. They didn't do events or, you know, uh, take private readings. They did it in the secret of their home just for close friends and family. Wow. So is it passed on by genetics? Well, yes and no, right? So I like to think of it as being hereditary, but it all depends on if we inherit that ability or not. Okay. For example, I grew up seeing and feeling the departed. Yep. My sister can't see, sense, or feel anything, to be honest with you. <laughs> so it's actually kind of funny because, you know, growing up, I was having these experiences of seeing and hearing the departed, and my sister's like, what the hell are you talking about? Right. I don't see anything. Yeah, which is funny. I, I saw something of, of Meet the Frasers, your show earlier, and one thing had me cracking up. There was something when you were going to uh, get engaged and there was weather happening and then your sister was like, aren't you a psychic? Can't you tell that the weather was going to be bad today? And you, you said, I can't see that the weather's going to be bad today. Even the weatherman can't see it that it's bad today. So I thought that was, so you can't see everything? No, I can't. And you know what? Here's, so, here's what's so funny. You gotta remember that as a psychic or a medium, we don't see the future. The souls on the other side do. So when you're talking to a psychic or a medium and they predict something, what's so amazing is they, that information comes from somewhere. Where, where does it come from? It comes from our loved ones in spirit. Because mm. when we pass on, we're able to see today, tomorrow, and the future. And our loved ones in spirit are able to see what's coming down the line. 
So when a medium is predicting something, what they're really doing is talking to someone that you've loved and talking to that person. That person is telling them what's going to happen in the future. Wow. And then how do we know that if we have psychic medium abilities? Well, we all have an ability. And here's what I want you to know is that every single psychic medium is different. Every medium is different in how they connect. Some mediums will dream, you know, their messages or dream of loved ones that have passed. Some mediums will go and actually use cards like tarot cards mm -hmm. and different things to connect. Some psychic Psychics or mediums will need to hold on to something to feel the energy. So it's all about finding the way that you connect. And I can tell you right away that you've had experiences being psychic as well, because as I'm here, they're telling me that you've sensed and felt the spirit world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like don't, don't want to cry yet. And they're also telling me that you've gotten dreams, and that's one of the ways that you've been psychic as well. Mm -hmm. Now, your papa passed. Yeah, my grandpa. Yeah. Because he's here when I'm connecting. <laughs> And he was telling me that he was literally like your dad here in the physical world. He had such a strong bond with you here in this world when I'm connecting with him. Mm -hmm. And literally, he says to me, this man was like your best friend when I'm connecting with him because he's remembering of you as just a little girl mm -hmm. and all the times that you had with one another. And first of all, I know the one thing he's telling me is like, tell her not to be so upset because he talks about you trying to see him before his passing. And he tells me about you not being able to be there and to get to say goodbye to him. He says, but you know what I want you to know? He keeps telling me, I want her to know how proud I am of her. He says, because she was the one I never had to worry about. Oh, man. He tells me that you're always calling him on the, time, on the phone and talking to him. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, he always knew what was going on in your life. You need to know that. Yeah. I have a feeling he's still here. Oh, and I'm like, here. if you like, if I, yeah, I was... <laughs> That's crazy. But wait a minute. He's also telling me when I'm connecting with him that there was an issue with his head that had happened. So was there a stroke that he had here in this world? Because he just showed me my head, my head, and then all of a sudden he talked about his brain being affected and he says, Matt, it changed who I was. Yeah. And it's so sad because you feel like you lost your grandfather before he even died. It's like so weird because actually my other grandfather did pass of a, a brain hemorrhage and then a stroke, but yeah, this grandpa that you're talking about, it had it, like a, a brain thing, and it completely changed. That's what I want to talk about. Yeah. He's telling me, listen, souls will put me back to what they felt, and he kept saying to me, my head, my head, and then he tells me that this changed his personality and who totally. he was. Totally. And that's, what I, that's why he wants to come through, because he tells me that the person that... The, the person that he was before he died is not the person that he wants you to remember. Oh, man. Because he says to me this. He goes, Matt, I can't believe this. He goes, you need to let her know. <laughs> he says that I am fine. Because when I'm connecting with him, like I said, you feel like you lost him before he even died. Because when you went to see him, you were like, this isn't my grandfather. I don't know who he is, but he's changed. He's not the same yeah. person. Well, that makes me feel good. Because I did have dreams about him, but it was still like that scary. Like, he, it just... You know, wasn't good dreams. But well, we need to talk about that because oh dreams. God. Well, wait, why do you say that? Because it's like so. This is being filmed right now, Matt. Well, you know you signed up for it. I, I don't know, know what I know. I, I guess listen, I, just I signed up for this and you signed up for this. <laughs> okay, so I don't we're know in it together. About. We're in it together. I guess, and, and Poppy too. What's up, Poppy? I gotta tell you that. <laughs> when. You know, when we dream of a loved one, right, and we have dreams, there's two things that happen in our dreams. So one, that we either have dreams of fear and anxiety that comes up, which oh, is yeah. why we have nightmares or why we think our loved ones are mad at us or our, right. our loved ones are sick or whatever it is. But then we also have dream visitations where our loved ones come and visit us and show us that they're okay on the other side. And one of the things that I think that he was trying to do is really show you that he's okay and that he's fine. Yeah. Strong personality. Woo! But this is crazy as well. He's also got a cat with him as well on the other side. <sighs> Did your family lose the cat here in this world? No, my grandma's name was Cass. No, no, no. There's a cat that's there. Who had the Maine Coon cat? This looks like a Maine Coon cat when I'm looking. They might have growing up. I don't know. I don't know. Find out because he's telling me this when I'm when I'm connecting. He's like, who the hell's cat is this? Who the hell's cat is this? <laughs> he saw me with his family. So I don't know if that was your mom's or if somebody had that, but I keep seeing that, that cat that's on the other side. I don't know. Not my not my um, but perhaps. I think there was cats around in Florida. So is there somebody by the name okay, a pe um I, I know this hold on, this is so weird. Is there a pet by the name of Pepper? Does somebody have Pepper? My mom had I think it was a dog named Pepper. Find oh, yeah. out. I, I also am hearing he's telling me Pepper's here. Pepper's here. 
Yeah, I think my mom had a pepper growing up. That's crazy. Find out because I'm hearing that. That, yeah, crazy. So he's just like cruising around. What yes. do they look like over there? Well, you know, when I'm sensing and feeling your, your grandfather, I'm seeing like quick visions of him. And I'm also hearing a name as well. He's telling me it's going to be either Anthony or Tony. Do you know who that would be who'd be with him? <sighs> there is an Anthony that passed. Um, no, not, not, not my grandfather, though. But no, no, no. With your, this would be with your grandfather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, well, there's already, there's an Uncle Artie that would be with him. And then Anthony, there is an Anthony that, that passed. And he had, he had, um, he had issues since he was little. But, um, that soul's there. Yeah. Because he kept saying to me, Anthony's here, Anthony's here. And he's also telling me Joey's there as well. There's also Joe or Joey. I keep hearing that name. I would have to think. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, there's a lot of Anthony's and Joey's in my family. There's a lot of J's. Well, he's telling me all these names. And here's what's so crazy is that when our loved ones passed, they're with all these people on the other side. And your grandfather yeah. wants... Your grandfather wants to thank you for holding on to all the photos because he tells me you were going through photos of him mm -hmm. and the family. He says to me, yeah. oh my God, I can't believe this. Yeah, I, uh, I love just looking through photos and all that. That's crazy. So when he like, go, when they go on the other side, they see their loved ones right there. Absolutely. <sighs> and then what about guardian angels? Do we all have a guardian angel? So I was hoping you were going to ask me this. Okay. You know, what's so amazing is people ask me, Matt, what if we don't have somebody watching over us? And what I can tell you is this. We're all born here in this world with two souls that are assigned to us. And that is a guardian angel and a spirit guide. And what's so amazing is this. Our guardian angel is the one that walks with us every day, that helps us when we're going through anxiety, when we're going through challenges, when we're going through struggles. And our spirit guide is the one that's with us on our life path here in this world and keeps us on path. And then how do we know? So the guardian angel, is that like when you have like conflicting thoughts in your head and like they kind of tell you, like you can feel it, like this is where you, sh like what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing? Well, we all have, we all have two vibrations, right? We have our everyday thoughts that are in our head and we have our psychic thoughts that are in our head. But what's tough is this. We don't always listen to our intuition. Mm -hmm. We are all born with intuition. And your intuition is that phone line that we have to heaven. It's that feeling that you get that the phone's going to ring. And next thing you know, it does. So that feeling that you get that someone's there and with you that had passed away. And then next thing you, know, rem you remember it was their birthday or a sig significant date. Yep. Your intuition is your direct phone line to heaven. And more importantly, that's the line that your loved ones are using to reach you. So our loved ones do try to guide us here in this world. The tough part is, is that we don't listen to their advice the way that we should. <laughs> So, yeah, there's a lot of times when we, like, you, when you feel your instinct, when you feel like follow your gut. People say follow your gut all the time, right? Maybe that's our guardian angel. Maybe that's our, our spirit guide. But we should go with that, right? Absolutely. Because I got to tell you this, all right? Even as a medium, I don't always listen to my intuition. And all the time, I'll hear <laughs> things, I'll sense things, and being psychic, I know that they're right. But I want to prove them wrong. Yes. And like they'll tell me, don't do this or don't go towards that or don't do the, this event here because your flight's going to be de delayed. And I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm doing it anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we that all... still happens to us. Yeah. That's wild. So then you know, do you have like a really good relationship with your spirit guides and your guardian angels? So actually, to be honest with you, I have a, I have a better relationship with everybody else's loved ones because I feel like I don't listen to mine as much as I should because constantly every day as a medium, I'm like the 24-hour call service to I, heaven. I bet. So I was thinking like, so when you're like going to the CVS, you're getting your prescription filled, you're going to get a sandwich, do you see people all the time? Absolutely. For me, it's this. When I'm going and I'm, and I'm in different places, I'll literally see the souls of our loved ones there alongside the living. So a woman who had lost her daughter who's at the supermarket checking out, I might see that daughter standing right behind her in spirit. You know, somebody who had lost their grandfather here in this world might be going in, following them as they're on their way into a job interview. Someone who had lost yeah. their dog here in this world, you know, I might see them walking and the dog walking behind them in spirit. We truly never lose anybody. Wow. That's amazing. And then talk to me about pets. Like, you know how devastating, it's like losing a family member mm -hmm. when you lose a pet. How do, do they pass over and are still with us as well? So here's what's so cool. The spirit world tells me this, okay. is that when we lose a pet, 
our pets already know that the afterlife exists. And that's the reason why they're not afraid of death and dying. Have you ever noticed that? They have like no fear whatsoever about death or dying? I don't know, I've never asked Chunk. But I don't know, I, honestly, you know how like people see like their dogs going like this and they're like, I think they see somebody, but we don't know. Is, are they seeing things? Absolutely. You know, pets are born with a filter. Pets can see, you know, things that we can't. They have like a different lens. So what's so crazy is that a lot of times what I'll hear from the spirit world is they'll actually come back and check up on their pets that they left here in this world. And a lot of times those pets will still see them. And then do the pets, like when they cross over, do they have like their ancestors there? <laughs> not really. Not what you think. So here's what's so crazy. There's something that happens in heaven called soul reassignment. So what does that mean? It means that here in this world, it's almost like when we adopt someone into our family. Yeah. If you go and adopt a child, right, at a young age, and you become that child's mother and father, in heaven, you're still connected to that child. That child doesn't go back to, you know, uh, their biological parents because there's a, there's a bond that forms. There's yes. an energy bond. Oh, right. And a okay. love bond. That makes sense. And it's the same thing with our pets. So when our pets go to the other side, our pets still remain within our family because they see you as their mom or their dad or their family. Oh, my gosh. And then, you know how you get feelings and you hear voices from the afterlife. Do you... Is it the same for pets? Do you hear them? And is it in English? You know what? I gotta tell you, yes. But you know, I don't hear souls like we do. Like, like people think that all the time that when I'm connecting with the spirit world that they're speaking full sentences to me, and they're not. What it is is quick bits of information. And a lot of times when I see a soul, like for example, when I sensed your grandfather here, yeah. I started asking him questions. You know, who are you with? How did you die? What are the messages that you have for your granddaughter? Why all, are you here? All in your head. All in my head. And then they choose on what they answer back. Sometimes they'll tell me everything. Sometimes they'll choose to stick to their own dialogue. But I always ask. Wow, that's incredible. So it's the same thing with pets. When pets come through, a lot of times, I don't even know that I'm talking to a cat or a dog. And it actually happens when I was with, um, I was actually on the air with Jenny McCarthy on her radio show, and she had her two friends there. And all of a sudden, there was a soul that came through that was, that was telling me that they were rushed um, into emergency surgery and died. And the woman was like, oh my God, that was my dog. It just happened a few weeks ago. And I had no idea that, you know, I was speaking to a dog because I wasn't seeing that soul, but I was hearing that soul. And I was seeing visions of an operating table and seeing visions of, you know, blood loss. And they're showing me different things because the spirit world uses their own symbols to communicate with me. Wow. So like for, for pets, it could be just visuals. It's not necessarily they're like, hey, Matt. Exactly. I never had a dog come in and say, hey, Matt. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to tell you something right now. I've learned, and this is what I wrote about in my book as well. What I wrote about my book is that the spirits tell me on the other side that one day when we cross over, we can actually speak to our pets. No way! Wait, now let me tell you something. That's weird as hell to me. Like, I'm going to tell you something. That's, that's like something, a TV show. That's, that's something like, I love my pets. I am all about the pets, but I don't want to hear from my pets on the other side. Like, I, I like them being silent. So, like, hearing that, like, freaks me out. And you're like, what kind of voice do they have? I don't want to know. <laughs> and you know what's so funny is people say to me all the time, like, how come you're freaked out? You're a medium. Like, well, listen, I'm still freaked out that I hear this. Like, right, right. But I guess what the spirits tell me is that on the other side, we're all spirits. So even here in this world, our soul senses the soul that's in that cat, that dog, that horse, that animal that you love. There are so many life questions that we all have on the day to day. And if we get the opportunity to ask a psychic medium, why not, right? So there's, there's certain things that, that we can learn about our day to day lives by learning about the afterlife. Absolutely. So our loved ones in spirit, tell me one thing that we all have a journey to do here in this world. And that's the reason why they send us signs and they want to help us. Because we really don't know what our journey is. But the souls tell me that one day when we transition onto the other side, we'll see exactly what we were meant to do, the people that we were meant to meet, and why we were put here on this earth. So there is a purpose for all of us. Absolutely. If you're living and you're breathing, there's a purpose for you. So then what happens if you, I hope this doesn't happen to anybody, but what happens if we do pass on and we're like, what? We were supposed to do that and we didn't, or maybe people pass at an untimely, untimely time. No, you're absolutely right. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes people pass on to the other side and they don't get to finish their journey here in this world. And sometimes they'll help to finish it from the afterlife through helping somebody else here in this world. And sometimes that's where reincarnation comes in. And that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother thing. Is that a thing? So 
I gotta be honest with you, it's very rare. I haven't heard souls talk about this much, but I wouldn't because, you know, if souls reincarnate, I wouldn't be able to talk to them. Because they weren't that person on in this world and they didn't have the life lessons and they didn't bring all the things to the afterlife. Correct. Okay, I'm learning. There's so much to learn and that's why we have to just dive deep and dive into it and yeah, that's dope. That's awesome. So one more thing, what do they look like up there? Like, because we know what we look like here and it's like a physical thing and we wear clothes and we have like this physical kind of, it's such a big part of our lives. But if they don't have the physical body, like what's going on there? So I'm so glad that you asked me this for one reason, because when we pass on, we keep our physical appearance. And what's so amazing is this, is that the same way that we like go and try to find the perfect Facebook picture or Instagram picture that best represents us, our loved ones in spirit do the same thing. And a lot of times when they come through, they'll come through in younger years because it best re represents them before they were sick, before they had the memory issues, before oh they had any, any problems here in this world. Wow, so we can like pick our like spirit avatar. <laughs> Absolutely, that's a good way of thinking of it, to be honest with you. And I gotta tell you, when souls come through and I see them in spirit, you know, they'll be wearing their wedding ring that they wore here in this world. Yeah. They'll have their hair the same way. You know, they'll wear, be wearing clothes on the other side. Oh my gosh, I love that. Cause I wanna like relive me being like 16, 17, riding a skateboard with bare feet. And I probably will be doing that forever. And maybe I'll if do that's that. what heaven is for you, it, yeah. It is. Cool. So everyone's just doing what they love out there and is they're looking their best. I mean, we all want our loved ones to look their best, right? Um, amazing. And then on the, in the afterlife, do we have like grief and pain like we have in this world? Absolutely not. You know, one of the things that I've learned is that when we transition onto the other side, we leave all of our negative emotions here. Woof. Here's what, but let's talk about what we do bring to heaven. When we go to heaven, we bring these things. Okay. Our memories, we bring our connections that we made here in this world, and we bring with us our life lessons that we learned here in this ah. world. Because we're here for a reason. Here is the classroom. The other side is the place where we're actually at peace. It's paradise for us. So that's like we pass the ultimate test. We can just be spring break forever. <laughs> well, there's actually jobs that we do on the other side. Jobs. But jobs, but not like Macy's or Starbucks. It's like, you know, there's certain things that we do once we get to the other side based on the life that we lived. Like what? So, for example... I had many souls that came through, you know, that had passed in tragic ways, one of which passed of an overdose here in this world. And when he got to the other side, sadly, he saw that his younger brother was going through that same addiction. Mm -hmm. So one of the jobs that he took in the spirit world was trying to get his brother help here in this world. So the jobs are to help the people in this world? Based on the lessons we've learned, yes. Wow. And this is all stuff you've learned growing up with all of this information and energy being transmitted to you. Well, like I said, I don't know everything. I'm still learning every single day. Mediumship is a language. And what's so amazing is that with every single reading that I do, I learn something more. And that's the reason why I wrote my new book, is to really take all the questions that people have asked me about heaven and the afterlife and answer them. Because I've learned one thing. The more that we learn about heaven and the afterlife and about what happens when we pass, the more that we're not afraid. Yeah, because it is kind of scary. The unknown is scary. Absolutely. Yeah. And then what would you tell people? I know you just kind of, was it, that was great right there, but is there anything else you would like to tell people to kind of put them at ease um, for us that just really don't know what's going on back out there or if our loved ones are okay? The one thing that I want people to know is this, is that your loved ones are not dead. They're just different. And even though they might not be physically here, there's still a spiritual connection that we have with them on the other side. And with that, there's a way to get in touch with them as well. Yeah, and then tell me, how do you, how do you get in touch with them? I guess it's with, the, with your thoughts, right? It's with your thoughts, looking for signs, yep. and also learning as much as you can about life after death. Because once you can do that, you can learn how souls communicate, why souls communicate, and how you can get in touch with them. I love that. I love that. And then how do we really tap into our psychic abilities? So here's what's really cool. Okay. The same way that we're trying to connect with the spirits, the spirits are actually trying to connect with us. Trying. And that's where a medium comes in, right? Because the medium is just that person in between. Yes. But what's really cool is to figure out how your loved ones are communicating with you. Because what I have to tell you is this. Every soul communicates different. And they communicate based on how they were in life. If right. you had somebody that was super talkative here in this world, chances are they'll be super talkative in the afterlife. If you had somebody that was really reserved and really quiet and didn't like to speak, guess what? It's going to be really hard to talk to them on the other side. 
But the way that you can do this and the way that you can really, really uh, tap into your own ability and connect with your loved ones is by asking your loved ones to send you a specific sign, something that you will know is really them. And then all you have to do is be open. Interesting. I've done that before. I swear I did this with my grandmother and she was like Pisces the fish and like I went out, something told me to go to this like river um, and I just sat there and I had a huge fish come right in front of me and I'd never seen a fish in that, that body of water before. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> well, listen, there's no such thing as coincidences. I mean, not in my world anyway. Coincidences are just a way for our loved ones to reach us. I love that. I love that. Well, thanks for coming through, Poppy. Thanks, Matt. Oh, you're so welcome. <laughs> I love it.